Hey everyone, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that little post notification bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. Today's topic, we have another story of some lost gold or lost gold ledge that led to some chunks of gold or gold nuggets being found on a hillside that came from this lost gold ledge. So this story starts out after the California gold rush when some miners were coming back from the California gold rush. So the story goes like this. El Habanero was a soap maker in Sonoida, Sonora, Mexico, which is right on the Mexico-Arizona border. People still go through Sonoida all the time to go to uh, Puerto Penasco, Mexico, on the Sea of Cortez. So the, the town is still there. It's been there, obviously, for a super long time. So, El Habanero, which is the name or nickname of, of this gentleman, uh, he met a couple of Mexican miners that were coming back from the California gold fields and the California gold rush. And of course, we know the gold rush happened in 1849 and into, you know, into the 1850s and then the gold only lasted a few years, and so then people started returning from the gold fields. So it appears this story happened more likely at some point in the 1850s or so. So El Habanero became partners with these two Mexican men, and they had found a ledge in the mountains on their way back from the gold field, and this ledge led to a lot of gold nuggets to be all over this hillside. So apparently they came from this gold ledge and maybe as the as uh, rains and and things happened to cause pieces of this ledge to just kind of roll down the hill, they happened to uh, spot a few gold nuggets and explored a little more closely. So the two Mexican miners, they told a story to El Habanero. They said that they went from Tenejas Altas to the Tool Tank. And a tank is like a pond or a water catch, a place where water settles in, in more of a you know, a small pond or, you know, a place, especially on the desert trails, a tank would be important for, you know, getting something to drink and, and uh, getting your horses or whatever, uh, you know, a drink there. So they said they went from Tanajas Altas to the tool tank, and then they took the old road to Sonoida, and they said... Along the road, it became dark, and they camped for the night in a dry camp. So it doesn't say how close they were to Sonoida, if they were still quite a ways out. But anyhow, they were on the normal road, the at least like a desert road, and on their way into Sonoida. But overnight, the horses got away from their camp. So the next morning, the two Mexican miners, they were forced to follow the tracks of the horses and try to get their horses back. And it sounds like they may have split up or it might have been a couple horses that got away and maybe the horses didn't necessarily stay together. So, you know, one of, you know, each of them had to follow a, a set of tracks and try to find the, you know, the horses uh, individually. So one of the men ran into this hillside that was scattered with gold nuggets while they were tracking the horse's tracks. And eventually when they reunited at Agua Salada, the one miner told the other of his find. 
And it doesn't say if they found their horses or not, or if they were then consumed with gold fever and made their way to Sonoida where they met El Habanero. So while talking to El Habanero, they agreed to an even three-way split of this gold if El Habanero would supply them with pack animals and supplies for the trip to go back out and, and find this, this hillside with all these gold nuggets. So apparently they took a few with them and uh, they had gold to show El Habanero and apparently he wasn't just a soap maker. Maybe that was one of his professions, but he must have also had a had a store, a little general store or something where he made soap and had other supplies. So anyhow, um, he agrees and he supplies the men with the goods that they need to go back into the mountains and the hills and... The three of them then go and they backtrack to, you know, back to Agua Salada where um, they were attacked by Papago Indians. So the two Mexican miners were killed and El Habanero was wounded, but he survived. But his injuries did eventually lead to blindness. So we wouldn't have a story if something wasn't written down you know, or relayed to someone or both. And that part comes in the name of a man named C.O. Bustamante. And Bustamante knew El Habanero in Los Angeles when Bustamante was young. It sounds like, like pretty young, maybe in his, his teens or so. So it appears that El Habanero ended up in Los Angeles, as this is where the old soap maker dictated a waybill to the gold to Bustamante on September 27th of 1878. So this way bill with directions to the gold ended up in C.O. Bustamante's father's hands and then made its way into the hand of an Arizona man named Benjamin Bird, or at least a copy of it did. So another man named Jose Alvarado of Yuma, Arizona, also got a copy of the waybill and had twice searched, you know, for the gold with a man that knew El Habanero. So they never found the gold, and the waybill was then turned over to Harold Waite, who wrote an article about the story in the January 1955 issue of Desert Magazine. So the waybill directions to the gold read as follows. First call, leave Quito, Baquito, following the old road leading to Tinejas Altus. Second call, thence to the end of Pinto Mountains. Third call, from Pinto Mountains Go to Cabeza Prieta Mountain. Fourth call. At Cabeza Prieta, there is a water well. Fifth call. After leading Quito Baquito following this imaginary line, pass or cross an arroyo at a place where the road forks out for the first time, one leading to Tenejas Altas and the other to Mohawk or the Gila River. The sixth call, by standing at the forks of the road to the right, three peaks standing alone are seen, and in direction to said peaks, the middle one of is the mine on the opposite side of it. It's a little, that, that, that one's a little bit confusing. I think it says you see three peaks in the mine, or the, the spot is on the back side of the middle peak. Seventh call, from the said forks in the direction said peaks down in, in the arroyo, there is a big flat rock in the form of a table with crowbars pointing to the peak of the said mine. So it sounds like there is a carving in a big flat rock helping point the way. 
Eighth call. We were killed at the foot of said peaks of said mine. The little peaks cannot be seen from no other place, but only from the fork of the old road leading from Quito Baquito to Tenejas Altas. On the other side of the middle peak, there is water, and there is where the gold is. Ninth call. You must have great care in locating the fork of the roads because it is the only point where the peaks can be seen and cannot be seen from no other place. Tenth call. In order for you to make sure, find from the old folks at Sonoida which is the old road leading from Quito Baquito to Tenejas Altas. It must be blotted out after so many years. In other words, I think they're saying maybe not as many people were using the road at this point, so it might be starting to fade back into the desert. And the 11th call, and all I ask is that you, if you find the mind, you help my daughter. This is my last will and testament, wherefore I witnesseth with my signature, El Habanero. So it sounds like this is the kind of the last will and testament of El Habanero. He wasn't able to, to find the mine. Now the challenging part about this is that El Habanero wasn't, wasn't one of the original finders. So these details had to have been relayed to El Habanero and then he wrote them down. It, Obviously, it would be much better if El Habanero had been there before, you know, the uh, miners were killed. If he was at least shown the spot and could relay it even more from memory. Because otherwise, what's happening here is it's going from his memory of what the miners told him when they made the deal. So it's possible that there's, uh, you know, a little part left out or or whatever i don't know i don't know for sure how close they got before they were you know waylaid by the uh papagos so anyhow that is the story of el habanero and the lost gold wedge or gold ledge in the uh, mountains down on the arizona and sonoida um Arizona Mexico border near Sonoida, who would be kind of uh, west of there. So, anyhow, not sure what your thoughts are on the story. I love these old stories. You know that a lot of them are probably probably true, but you know it's always possible it was a small gold ledge, and there, you know, and, and some other travelers found some of the some of the gold that was, uh, you know, available and it's maybe it's not there anymore, but it's also such a remote desolate area. It's highly possible, you know, with that area that there's hardly been any feed on in that area in a hundred plus years. So it easily could be there because it's just, there's nothing out there. There's no, there's no towns. There's, there's no nothing. It's just desert and mountains. So it very well could easily still be there. So if you like these kind of stories, like and subscribe to my channel.